Hello, I'm horror cartoonist Dennis St. John. I draw monsters and write twisted tales. As you can imagine, I was a little obsessed with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Lucky for me, so were most of my high school friends. All except one. One friend who stubbornly refused to join the Scoobies. So here we are, 20 some odd years later. I'm teaming up with Doc Travis, John Teach Landis, and maybe a special guest or two. And we're going to make our friend, Michael Poli, watch one episode of Buffy a week until he's no longer the Buffy Virgin. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Buffy Virgin. We are on uh, the season finale that's not. Season four, episode, what, 21? Uh, <laughs> Primeval. Um, I'm your host, Dennis St. John. Uh, and we're joined by the usual gang. Um, why don't you guys introduce yourself in the order of your own choosing? Hey, everyone. It's Travis. That's my voice. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's here to stay. <laughs> and uh, this is John. You can get used to my voice because it's powered by a uranium core and will never die. <laughs> and this is Michael. My voice is powered by virginity. Uh, I, I'm watching season four, episode 21 for the first time. All right. Uh, before we get into this episode, though, let's go to reactions. Audience reactions. This week we're reacting to Superstar. Um, so first up, uh, we did a Twitter poll based on uh, our host Yoder's uh, trial of Michael in his crimes against Jonathan. Um so whether Michael should be thrown out of the show for his crimes against Jonathan, um, the options were sacrifice the virgin, what is happening, and Michael must return. And with a resounding 72, 72% of the vote, Michael must return. So congratulations. Uh, I mean, that, that also speaks to all of you. I, I hard to imagine you could keeping the show going without me, but uh, I guess we're just going to keep doing this. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Michael Poli to have like, Twitter bots voting in his favor. It sounds like a thing he would do. <laughs> okay, I voted once <laughs> for my own return. Um, I will be honest. There is there was only one vote for sacrifice the virgin, and it was me. <laughs> <laughs> a house divided will not stand, Dennis. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was all. Our cruel host David Yoder put put that into action. Um, in reaction to before Superstar came out when I was kept being like I promise the new episode is coming it's coming in a week I promise uh, Renee Pope Monroe uh, posted a gif of Cookie Monster um, twiddling his thumbs waiting uh, so thanks for that and uh, Sagov9 uh, says uh, that ending was hilarious I gotta admit at the start I was confused for about 10 seconds before I realized what was going on uh, yeah Yoder took over, but he's gone now. Gone for good. We cast the spell to get rid of him. <laughs> he's, he's not gone for good. <laughs> he's fine, folks. Don't worry. Yoder will return. All right. Uh, so that's reactions. So let's move on to Great Lines. Great Lines. Yeah, so in the elevator shaft, Buffy... Xander, you know we love you, right? Willow. We do, totally, Xander. Oh, God, we're going to die, aren't we? Yeah. Love it. Just, I just nailed the, the Buffy experience the way I, it's meant to be. Lots of love. Yeah. I also like in that one when Xander is like, Charles, you get got to get down here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I like uh, earlier in the line, earlier in the episode where Charles is like, well, uh, Spike can be very convincing when he when when when, when, when. I'm very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I liked uh, uh, Xander's. Uh, Does anyone else miss the mayor? I just want to be a big snake. <laughs> the nice Xander moment. Uh, I love I love Spike when he said, "Chips all round." Then somebody bought the potty pack. <laughs> Such a great making fun of chips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of chip drama this episode. Yeah. Oh my God, so much chip drama. <laughs> it's the chip you can't dip. <laughs> the summary. The whole thing that hit me with watching this episode is that the whole thing feels like a mid-90s 
movie or cartoon show for children where they're just trying to sell the action figures. Like it yeah. feels like yeah. Ninja Turtles or G.I. Joe or something where like, like especially like when Buffy like reaches into Adam and pulls out the uranium core and it's like neon green and glowing. Like that just feels like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ooze moment or something. <laughs> And they did make some toys, right? But not of this character or of that, like, accessory. Was there an Adam action figure? That's a good I don't thing. think there was ever a call for an Adam action figure. <laughs> <laughs> what a wasted opportunity. Uh-oh, Buffy. It's the Initiative Secret Base playset with Adam and all his monster soldiers. It looks like Riley's in trouble. <laughs> Adam is back, and this time with his machine gun hand. I'm fully upgraded, so you're toast. And with zombie soldier force at my side, we'll conquer the world. But Buffy has upgrades of her own. From the raging storm, we bring the power of the primeval one. Primeval Buffy's eyes glow in the dark, transforming Adam's bullets into beautiful doves. My plans, they're boiling! I'm ripping out your uranium core! <laughs> primeval Buffy and Machine Gun Adam from the Season 4 collection sold separately. The Initiative Headquarters and Zombie Soldier Forest also sold separately. Some assembly required. Uranium battery sold separately. Separately. Kids ask parents for help. All right. Uh, yeah, let's move on to the kill count. The kill count. Uh, what I did this week, because it was a big, like, monster violence scene, is I counted every time, like, somebody, like, really hit the floor or, like, if they were on fire or if they were, like, thrown all the way across the pit. I was like, they're not getting up from that. Or if a, a demon got shot. Things like that. I didn't, like... Um, I didn't then go back and count all the bodies on the floor because I didn't know if I'd be doubling up or not. Uh, so I counted at least 20 humans died, nine demons, um, and two reanimated scientists meet their ends again. Uh, so those, those were my numbers of on-screen deaths that I could see, uh, which I think they at some point say at the end that the uh, total was 40% of the initiative, which not knowing what the full initiative numbers are, I couldn't calculate from that. But large death count this episode. Those last scenes are insane. The direction on them is crazy. <laughs> I like how they like they figured out this big stunt of like throwing somebody really far across into the initiative pit, and they, then they just keep doing it. Yeah. Also, there's those like giant jets of flame. Like, where are those coming from? They're just like coming out of the crates. Like, <laughs> and there, yeah. And there's like one scientist who gets pulled down by from the pit by this giant tentacle thing, and it was like that thing was never strapped down to begin with. <laughs> I love the choice to shoot it all wide, so you can see all this weird action that they haven't quite figured out. Yeah, it's just like it will be chaotic. This happens. This happens. Let's go and go. <laughs> it feels like when you are like doing a physics test in a video game or something like that if you're just testing out the environments and just like, yeah you know, <laughs> like, yeah, like those uh videos of like just body smashing where the bodies look look all liquid like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good call all right uh so that was that uh let's move on to weird noticings and trivia <laughs> Weird noticings. Okay, has there been any evidence that Riley had a chip before the chip announcement that Adam <laughs> says you have a chip now? I think we've always been suspicious about whether he had a chip in his head, right? Have we? I mean, he's just a bit of a tool, so... It turns out some of his cardboard acting could be because of the chip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well then, I await a... Huge improvement in enhanced Riley, chip minus the chip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. This is such, a, such bullshit with the fucking chip and Riley. I can't believe how that, that turned out where Adam's like, I've called you and now I control you. I activated the chip. I don't remember this shit happening. I was just angry that that's the stuff, how they figured that story out. I thought there'd be a showdown confrontation early on when Adam went to, uh, I mean, sorry, when Riley went to Adam. Instead, you're, you belong to me and just controls him? And just I, ra angry Riley just taking it? Ugh. It's also like such bullshit that it's like very frustrating that it's like this is Riley like having a moment where he realizes the truth and like he's got a, this would be the big moment to confront Adam, but he's like programmed so he like can't act and it's like he's he can't emote right next to like a robot character who can't emote. So just like when Spike walked into that scene, I was like, thank God, because like, <laughs> I need somebody to be able to express emotions in this scene, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so 
So when um, they wake up, when Forrest becomes a monster, like, do you think they put a mind control chip in his head or do you think he just woke up and was like, yeah, I'm into this? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was into it. I don't think he had any chips. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't see any, like, personality change on him or anything. He was just like, yeah. <laughs> so this whole episode, we we're constantly come, come against the fact that Spike made a deal with Adam that apparently is not in writing anywhere. <laughs> and that when certain conditions are met, he will get the, his own chip removed. Spike needs a contract. He needs like just some simple freelancer agreements. And it is shocking how Adam can be so dismissive of his own agreement because it, it didn't, you know, and in fact, it turns against Spike at a point. And, and just Spike is constantly reminding us about this problem. Anyway, uh, doing some freelance projects lately, uh, this stuff is just terrifying to me. <laughs> I feel like the Spike, Get the spike it in the writing. lab. Yeah. You know, I, I think there is a, a law firm that specializes in contracts uh, of the supernatural kind. <laughs> maybe they uh i'd love to see the notary on those things <laughs> uh, let's see yes yeah, so it looks legal can i see two forms of id from everybody <laughs> william the bloody interesting okay well the play with a chip in his head demands <laughs> the chip in his head be removed upon delivery of so adam makes soldiers at this incredibly impressive speed but why does he start only now, just before <laughs> his attack? And I get the plan, if you can call it a plan, is to kill a bunch of people and then turn them into soldiers. But having people being killed, like, kind of at a steady pace throughout this whole season in places that Adam could have access to them. In fact, Adam straight up eviscerates things and stuff that he could probably turn into undead monsters. Also, is it only humans and not demons? Because he had that whole deal with the demons for a little while. But instead, it's just he's going with the undead human plan. So he's going for a mix. Yeah. He wants the mix. Oh, sure, of the monsters and humans. Okay, so he's got the monster parts there, and he's kind of like just putting them all together. Yeah. No, it would have been it would have been great if like he swarmed the initiative with like a bunch of monster human hybrids. Um, my, my hunch is like it's like waiting for like the organic produce, right? So the the, the initiative soldiers, they're like the good fancy lettuce, and you know, <laughs> I don't want to make monster human hybrids out of just like the general populace of Sunnydale because you know, that's not that impressive. Those are just off the rack. You know, this is you know special you know super secret super soldiers. He wants to make super demon soldiers. Oh no, fair fair point. Good it call. is all that. It's just crazy that this is the plan and that he's been hinting at a crazy plan the whole time and that this is the crazy plan. Or like, how was this? This was apparently Maggie Walsh's plan the whole time. And yeah. like, why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like you also lose this note about like, uh, but damn, his soldier design skills leave something to be desired. And like, Forrest is a terrible looking monster. It very much frustrates me because he's made <laughs> out of like, one yellow monster who's apparently like leopard skinned like he's like a some sort of leopard patterned reptile uh i don't know could have just got with some more variety or something i like that he had to keep forest like face yeah of all so we parts, know like i need the face i need to keep my face and i need to keep my left hand <laughs> <laughs> How weird was it to see Maggie? Was that Maggie Walsh, the actress with makeup, or was that a woman with Maggie Walsh mask? I looked it up on IMDb, and it says it's Lindsay Krauss again, which surprised me because, like, why bring her back for this? Oh, so it was her. Okay, I wasn't sure either. It totally looked like it totally did not look like her that they took of her before. They're like, "Hey, before you leave, can we just get a mask of your face for an unspecified future project the writers are working on?" <laughs> this before you go. You know, like a real chill, like death mask. You know, like just like a real chill mask. Let's have you lay down and we'll just <laughs> pour this goo over your face and just be real chill. And she's like, I'm so angry. This is why I'm leaving. You yeah, know, it seems like adding insult to injury to have her back on to just play like a zombie. Well, I think it's a miracle she came back. I mean, that, that, that's for me. It's not like she had a crappy role because, come on, if you're going to leave in the middle of it, don't expect your role at the end of the episode to be good. But I'm just like, it's a miracle. I mean, they must have got that in, in legal writing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I should have had the same lawyers who negotiated Lindsay Krause's contract. Yeah, if you're on a show, you got to go off the show in some way, just as spectacular. Uh, so Giles put his earring back in. Uh, just a little visual noticing there. Uh, 
<laughs> Apparently couldn't have the reunion without it. Uh, so seriously, the repelling part, when did everybody learn repelling? And that was like a viable way to like get down the elevator shaft. <laughs> like, I know, you know, you've got, everything's kind of a surprise in the world of uh, TV where people make plans and then they do them. But like, I don't think that's as easy as just like, we have the gear and we can do it. It's not hard. It's not the most hard thing either, but it just felt like more than I expected the Buffy crew to <laughs> do. So it's like, we can repel down an elevator shaft but we also will not will not do it in a secretive way. <laughs> Xander so did it in boot on, camp. It's all this is all based on Xander's knowledge. Uh, <laughs> it was okay, also great. the most dangerous way to repel because at any moment the elevator could have been engaged and killed them all. Because, <laughs> uh, kids, don't try this at home because that is like the most dangerous way to repel down anything. Well, the the, el the elevator is under them. And They're, it could go up. It could go up. Yes, it could go up. That would be horrible if it went up. Uh, I thought it was interesting. The fact that the elevator is under them means that the uh, initiative has at least two floors. Yep. That was the other like interesting inconsistency. We're like, oh, okay. Yeah, it was so dangerous. I mean, the whole time I'm like, oh my God, what if the elevator starts going up? And of course, I know what happened. I know the <laughs> not going up. I no, I totally felt that tension too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then when Buffy and Willow are hugging and going down, the, you know, you're like, what? This is such the wrong time for this. <laughs> Dude, but I guess that's like the group hug. You were the, that's the best time. The group hug of the three main characters since season one was the best part of this season slash 2018. It was so <laughs> I have to say. Um, and then Giles is up there, so it's like the crew, like the crew's crew. Yes. And, you know, they made a point like Anya wasn't coming to the final showdown, although it seemed like she would have because she didn't really care that they fought. But and then Tara wasn't there, which I thought was a little bit weird. I thought Tara should be there. But man, it, sometimes it's nice when it's just like the crew, four crew. Um, Wait, there's four of us. I know. It's so crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. Who's Manos? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, also, did you guys catch that they did inject Riley with some red goo? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Walsh injects him, right? Yeah. Wonder. I, I don't know if that is going to do anything later on, but I'm like, it's just it's just Gatorade. It's, it's just <laughs> like really, it's just like a really really strong Gatorade, guys. <laughs> He's full of electrolytes. But it's also like, is he going to remember that? Because it, it's one of those things where it's like, guy's kind of shady. Okay, let's be honest. Riley's kind of shady, so it's like. Is he going to tell people he got injected with like really crazy monster goo? <laughs> or is he going to be like, I don't remember, you know, <laughs> like hyena, like being turned into a hyena makes you not remember, except you totally remember. Okay. okay. It's going to be one of those situations or is he, was he really kind of like drugged out of it? I think he was awake enough to remember that, 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 that went down is what I'm saying. But is it anyone's business, but his, what he gets injected with? Well, I mean, if it turns into a monster later. This is earlier, but did it look like everybody was over the spike insults when they were all getting together in this in the like courtyard? I think Pretty they much. get over it when they're when they're elevating. Yeah. They're yeah, that's when it's over. Yeah. I and mean, it's like it's like like, you know, they got over it enough, but spikes insults really uh like got got them to the point where they could actually confront what was going on internally right. that they would have just ignored. So really Spike was like their therapist this whole time. Yeah. Uh, and, and nothing uh, really beats uh, as far as a conflict resolution strategy, nothing beats everybody inhabiting the same body. All right, let's get into the specifics of the spell. Yeah, so um, I just thought it was kind of a little bit of a slight to Willow that uh, she's spirit and uh, that Giles is mind. Because I think Willow is totally as smart as Giles, if not smarter. And I think that given Buffy and Giles' relationship, I think maybe Giles can be spirit as kind of the, the father figure, the guy who's guiding her through growing up. I think arguably <laughs> Giles should be spirit and Willow should be mind. Just a thought. I, I mean, I think the, spe the very specific reason is because he knows, knows Sumerian. Which yeah, in this instance, spell. yes. In this instance, yes. But if clearly we're meant to read it more broadly about their relationship. Yeah. It was weird that they called Xander Hart, but then called him Animus, because that's like the Jungian unconscious male side of a woman. Right. Yeah, I thought Animus and Hart was kind of a dodgy translation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I did like Buffy being Manos. The hands of fate. 
<laughs> do you think they uh do you think they watch a lot of captain planet there's like ah the one who doesn't have anything else to do could be hard <laughs> it totally seemed like a captain planet character that she became almost it was fantastic oh we forgot to give a point to uh to the episode for mentioning the title of the episode in the episode buffy's like you're dealing with primeval forces <laughs> I wasn't quite sure, like, what? So my, my thought of how the spell was supposed to go was that basically Buffy was just going to have, like, witchy powers and um, going to be able to, like, say, like, the spell to, like, paralyze Adam. But, like, the yeah, way the that is turned, not what happens. The way the spell worked out was, like, Buffy is, like, a primeval demon with insane powers that happens to speak Sumerian and does different stuff. Like, am I, am I wrong? Is she... <laughs> Is Buffy the primeval force now? Like, and I thought the Sumerian spell was supposed to kind of knock him out. So that, yeah. But instead, like, she just pulls out his like. She just like. Yeah, the spell does like bullet time. Like it, it's a bullet shield. It's a bullet shield spell. I mean, we all have one of those in our hat, you know. Um, yeah, and then she. I don't know. Like, I, I think I was totally confused about what the spell was supposed to do. But it seems like she's like this primeval. Was she the primeval force that they summoned? Like, was she like? <laughs> Like a specific, I mean, she didn't even seem like a combination of things. She just seemed like her own damn demon thing. Well, I can tell you what she was saying in Sumerian because well, uh, BuffyWorld.com has a translation. I don't know if BuffyWorld.com really speaks ancient Sumerian, but they claim they do. And if I can't the trust the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I, can I do a Buffy, uh, a Buffy tidbit? The studio um, hires someone who can speak latin and all these languages and they'll do a, a rough translation from english to latin or english to i imagine they had to hire someone who spoke sumerian to do this whatever happened to latin at least when it didn't make sense the church approved <laughs> what does the sumerian spell say it says uh so when buffy says shamiendan gesh tu and so on what she's saying is we are heart we are mind we are spirit from the raging storm, we bring the power of the primeval one. Oh. And then later she says, Ima Shengab, which means boil the air. And that's when she uh, stops the bullets midair. Okay. Cool. So, so yeah, so I thought it was going to be like this, this monster mash of powers, but instead they just summon a super powerful force, the primeval force. I think, bring, like now that you're saying primeval force, I feel like that's a better name for the episode. Because that would imply like military force also, right? Oh, true. Like primeval forces. That sounds like a cool video game that would be like a, <laughs> a spin-off. Super Street Fighter like, 4. Primal Rage, right? <laughs> Use of primeval forces. That actually does sound fun. Um, and I also noted that Buffy had yellow eyes at the beginning of the spell and had red eyes by the, by the time she destroys the uranium core. Also, I hate those yellow contacts. Like... It's like she's supposed to like be at this like god level, but like they just look super unhealthy. It looks like you got like eye jaundice. Like, speaking of random eye stuff, did Forrest get his eye like burned out by Spike when the th with the cigarette yes. butt? Yes, yes, because he doesn't have the eye contact. Message. Yes, he doesn't have a cloudy eye until after uh, Spike does that to him. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, that's the only thing that happens when a cigarette butt goes into your eye. It's yeah. like it just and it burns for a long time. Like, <laughs> it gets cloudy. <laughs> when they put the cigarette on your skin, it just burns and burns and burns. It hardly ever goes out. So before we move on from the spell thing, but do you think the spell breaks the universe to have a spell this powerful? Because like it seems like they should be using this all the time, but <laughs> it's just too. It's literally too much power that like. They can never, they can never fight someone as weak as Adam again. Do you know what I mean? Because there's no consequence whatsoever for having this powerful spell. Yeah, they maybe they're worried about using up the gourd. Well, they didn't. They haven't said a spoken <laughs> consequence of the spell, but there's always consequences to magic. I mean, if we, hmm. so if we haven't learned anything from Buffy, that there's always a consequence to magic. So, so like I, you meet, I'll, like you meet your true love and everything. It's great. Right? <laughs> yeah, the, those love spells, zero consequences. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't get too. I wouldn't get too hung up on that concept just yet. But I think you're on to something that that they do always have to raise the stakes. I think that's all we can say about that, Mike. Okay, cool. So I got to throw a prediction into that. Got it. Uh, I do really like when Forest explodes. Uh, they didn't just do a <laughs> regular <telling> explosion. <laughs> they, they like added extra meat to it, and you can see his head flopping around like. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, like, I, uh, I totally frame by frame that when I watched it. Like, uh, you know, the gore, the weird, like, body horror gore this episode, they really stepped it up a notch. Like, yeah. I, I love that uh, Forrest got, like, jawsed. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here. Like, if you're a monster and someone's like, Here, hold this pressurized tank, you should say no. Yeah. <laughs> It happens in Angel this season as well. Somebody gets Jaws. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. That big old beast. So what does it mean to be Jaws? I mean, can you just... If I give you a pressurized gas tank and then it oh, explodes. Oh, literally that. Yeah, that's to be Jaws. Okay, cool. Never, oh, whatever oh you God. do, never put I it went, right in your mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. I went total Bond villain on it and I was thinking about Jaws. Oh. So you yeah. mean the shark Jaws. My yes. mistake. Bruce. Since uh, Forrest looked more like a Jaws than a shark. But yeah, <laughs> he looks a bit like a shark too with those teeth. True, they probably are old shark teeth. <laughs> old shark teeth. <laughs> I got some old shark teeth. Can't afford fresh. Oh ones. God! Did we? We didn't even talk about the horrible machine gun in Adam's right hand. Oh yes, let's. Yeah. Oh wow! Oh, God, <laughs> I've been doing some upgrades. I, I I'm curious about where the bullets are coming from, and my theory are they are recycled diskettes. <laughs> he, he, he eats mini discs and poops out bullets from his arm that's what i think is happening yeah there's definitely some weird internal stuff going on with his body like it's able to like process stuff in the bullets or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually uh one of my Rex is because of that bullet arm um can you believe they had a uranium core and the, didn't use it plot wise to blow up the initiative they're just like you know what we're, not, we're, we're just going to make it disappear into the ether. I mean, what poor dimension did that uranium core get sent to that then exploded or like... That went to the shrimp dimension for sure. <laughs> I mean, <it's> like, <laughs> here's a way out. Here's a way to just d eliminate the, the initiative headquarters and tie it all up in a neat bow. Nope, that uranium core is going to go away. <laughs> yeah, they could have said right. like, yeah. This has like 10 minutes to explode. We got to get out of here. Get everybody, yeah. Uh, so I said that, that there's that Wookiee suit that gets a lot of use this episode or the <laughs> like Buffy kicks it once then then uh, that yeah, spike snaps its neck yep. and then like later on we see it again in the like final like battle scenes like there's either a bunch of these guys running around or it can't actually be killed. I feel like we never really saw the tentacle monster. No, we didn't. <laughs> Just it's like this amazing scary <laughs> You're at Sokodoji tentacle monster. There was a tentacle monster at the end of season one, right? True. Yeah, the hell spawn. Yeah, but I think this is, I mean, this is a different one. Maybe uh, like uh, just a hell mouth just ex oh, accidentally yeah. opened up. Like, Remember that, that would make sense. Totally unrelated to Adam's plan. There's just like, there's so much chaos going on down here. Somebody accidentally did the right combination of human and demon blood to like open up. <laughs> <laughs> the mouth to hell opens. Yeah. All right. I buy it. I mean, just riffing on what Travis said, like they're just going to fill in what was left of the initiative facility with concrete and forget it ever happened. That's a totally usable facility, basically. Just <laughs> that seems insane, like government waste. And also, yeah, writers, like, <laughs> solve these problems smarter, please. It's also like just a terrible way to like quickly wrap everything up. Is like now let's cut to this like black room and have all these men be like, yeah. I guess this didn't work, but we won't say <laughs> anything about Buffy and these people. Like, uh, and also they called themselves a council, which was like a little like they're not the Watchers Council. Um, right. It was just such a like we need to very quickly write, wrap this up. Like, uh, let's just this is nerve. Like, let's just borrow this background from Neon Genesis of no background. Uh, Charlie Rose, the Charlie Rose set. Oh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> So, I mean, that makes you, you know, and I've got to make predictions about it, obviously, but like, what's to become of everyone who was involved in the initiative before, right? Like, are they completely like on their own? Do they have new fresh identities? Like, are they just re-sucked up into the military, like another military organization? It's kind of like, uh, very, like, and, and also like all the people that died down there, are they just like, they're part of the concrete infill now? They don't get burials. They're just like, hey, you're a part of the initiative. So you're total MIA and there's like yeah. a statue that just stands where it is or some small little marker with an eye or whatever their symbol is. And it's like, that's where you, that's where they lay. 
Can you imagine? Also, like, there's so many fucking tunnels into the initiative for <laughs> these other places. Like, it's so easy for them to fuck this up. It feels like. Can you imagine that, like, you become, like, a doc for, like, the VA, and you're, like, doing some surgery on a vet, and you're, like, start doing some quick carving together, and somebody's, like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? He's, like, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm used to working with demons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to questions for the group. Questions for the group. All right, so um, there's a lot of... And the only questions for the group then are medical related for the doctor. Uh, I start with um, how safe was Riley's self surgery into his own chest? It's a pretty risky area to, you know, do surgery on your own chest. I mean, just that's just an FYI, folks. If that didn't seem obvious to you at home. Um, also, where they said the chip was, I don't think he could have reached himself. But so with the, like the location, they say, I mean, it wasn't like a superficial, maybe, maybe, I mean, it's all just, it is definitely not safe. Also, there was an insane amount of blood just, just like flying around in that room. Like it was an unsafe work environment because <laughs> um, you got like Riley blood, then Forrest blood, and then there was Maggie Walsh and that other doctor blood. I mean, he needs to get a full infectious disease panel. Okay. <laughs> after after so after doing self surgery in that dirty ass environment, uh, yeah. It, it anyways. It because it was the chip was like supposed to be close to a nerve. Yeah, his thoracic nerve, which is. It, I mean, maybe they just maybe they meant it was like, just just underneath his. I mean, it it didn't quite make sense exactly where it was supposed to be, but it, it felt pretty superficial, but. If you were trying to control someone's brain with a chip, Dr. Travis, yeah. would you place the chip on their thoracic nerve? No. <laughs> I mean, not like I've got advanced chip secrets, guys. Okay. <laughs> That's just not where I put the chip. So look at the saw that um, Maggie Walsh, zombie Maggie Walsh is holding. Yeah. Um, That's actually a real... What is that actually for? It's a, it's, it looks like a striker saw, and it's for, it's for autopsies. And... and uh, yeah, it looks, it looks almost exactly like the saws you use in autopsies. Good to know. So yeah, it's like, uh, a, like a bone saw. Bone saw. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty threatening then when, when she comes at him with that. That's definitely business. That's the business end of a saw. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you're lying on a table and somebody walks up to you with that, run, don't walk. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, make, a family, like... make a family emergency, <laughs> you know, <laughs> take a phone call. Hello, hello. Oh, I've got to take this. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like in that shot also, like the juice flowing through Maggie is real brown. <laughs> it's full of air. Like, I mean, it doesn't even, I mean, it's got pockets of air where there should just be fluid. I mean, it, it must've been a, I, it must've been a real hard prop to work with. I'm, I'm not going to hate them too much. But that should all be brown. There should not be that, that air. That's not how fluid works. All right. Yeah, all our questions were just uh, uh, asking you medical yeah. nonsense. Monster, uh, monster medical nonsense. I love it. This is, yeah. All right, so let's move on to recommendations. Recommendations. Um. I'm going to recommend, because uh, of the level of violence and like guts being pulled out and, and heads exploding, I'm going to recommend Riccio, the story of Ricky. Uh, have any of you guys seen this? Uh, it's a, based on a manga, and it's um, kind of like a prison break, a guy with supernatural strength in prison. Um, if you ever watched the um, first iteration of The Daily Show, the five questions video had, that, had, had a head smash from that. Uh, but it's got really insane over the top levels of like crazy, like superhuman violence. And it has stuff like at one point, Ricky gets like a mouthful of razor blades and then he gets like slapped in the face. <laughs> and like, it's really crazy and it's a funny movie. Um, and also, I'm going to recommend Videodrome, which is an excellent, totally opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, there's a bunch of scenes in this, this episode that remind me of Videodrome. Originally, I was thinking of like scenes with cigarettes being put out and there's a scene in that with debbie harry putting out a cigarette on her own chest um 
But then I was also like, there's just an insane amount of screen time in this episode. People are constantly looking at screens, so they might as well be at the cathode ray mission. And finally, that uh, at the end, there's like a gross organic handgun um, that's a thousand times more interesting looking than Adam's handgun. Uh, also, reaching your hand into somebody's chest cavity. Yeah. <laughs> also that. Yeah. Well, so really, Videodrome is a, like, if you haven't seen Videodrome, you really should. It's like one of David Cronenberg's best. Uh, I'm also going to recommend the movie Freaked, which I might have already recommended before, but uh, I wasn't sure. Uh, it's a Alex Winters movie, uh, Bill from Bill and Ted. Uh, it's about uh, Randy Quaid is like an evil scientist who makes like a super freak show and makes like people into mutants. Uh, has a great prison break and everything. It's a really funny, weird movie. And uh, Keanu Reeves has is uncredited as uh, a dog face boy in that movie, uh, but it's totally Keanu. <laughs> That sounds amazing. Sorry, Alex Winter directed it or he's in it? He's in it and he directed it. Oh my God, this sounds incredible. How have I not seen this? You haven't, you haven't recommended it before. That's a new Okay, one. excellent. Yeah, dude, I should have totally recommended I actually quote this movie a lot, but only nobody gets my quote from it. Because there's a scene where they're trying to break out and like they just keep make, making all this noise and Randy Quaid like doesn't notice. And then somebody finally knocks over a styrofoam cup and he turns around and he goes, styrofoam cup. <laughs> I say that every time styrofoam is around me. <laughs> uh, also, just because uh, Buffy became Manos, um, I'm going to recommend Manos to Hands of Fate, uh, which is like one of the worst movies of all time. Um, at the very least, watch the MST3K version. All right. And also, this is one of the worst episodes of all time, so it works out. Disagree. Still no. not the worst episode Still of the not show. The worst. <laughs> Still not the worst, man. Up it's there. such a. I mean, I just. This is such a weird episode that it's like it feels like a season finale, but it's like without any of the emotional consequences of it. And also, we have another episode. It's also boring. Like it's yeah. the thing. It's like it's not even like it's not even like you know the um, puppet show where it's like it's bad in ways that are like fun to make fun of or at least like visually interesting. This episode is just fucking boring. <laughs> We have like 10 listeners and you have to pick on the puppet show, okay? <laughs> there are like 10 people who listen to us and you gotta rile, rile one of the 10 up, okay? So I don't think this episode is, I don't think this episode is boring. I just think it's bad. Like I was interested in all of the things that were happening. They were just the wrong- They, they were just badly the presented, show. right? They weren't the things I wanted to have happen. <laughs> And even like the even the dialogue, which is normally like in in a Buffy episode, even when it's bad, like at least the dialogue is sharp. Like there's very few. Like I had a hard time finding my great line for this episode. There wasn't a lot of things. A lot of I'm, I'm a lot more positive on this episode than you guys. It it for me, it's got problems. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like a Stargate episode, or it feels like <laughs> really, really like low. The reason what I'm trying to say is it feels kind of like low low budget. Only in the sense that there's a bunch of actors who I don't recognize who have speaking roles. And then there's like, you know, like the general or like, you know, the commander. And then, and, and then it's like, then there's like this weird big action scene that doesn't feel like a normal Buffy action scene at the end. So it feels like a different show's action scene that's just kind of weird and wild and strange. You're um, right. Stargate, yeah, it feels like, yeah, like a sci-fi channel original production. Yeah. Like somebody in like a cobbled together military uniform shouting at monsters on a cheap set. Totally. Yeah. Or, and I would love to see like the high budget version of this final fight with like oh, just a bunch of like really cool looking monsters fighting people. But that's just like, like I said, like the big Wookiee suit gets a lot of time. And like... <laughs> <laughs> I bet they brought in a choreographer from a Stargate, though. I think you're totally right, Travis. It just feels like that That scene feels like it's just not shot. It's like the choreography is good, but it's not shot in a, well that make, in a way that makes it look good. Like they have all the pieces there, but the photographer has no experience shooting that kind of thing. And so it feels off and like chaotic, but chaotically produced, not like the, the sense of emotional chaos is there, but it's like, from the perspective of the photographer who doesn't know what he's supposed to be capturing, uh, if that makes sense. It's yeah. Like, and, but, and, yeah, totally. And like, like to that, shout out to the stuntmen who were doing amazing work this episode that we didn't totally. get to see. The guys yeah. flying like 20 feet in the air. The one guy who caught himself on fire. Like these are all really impressive stunts that don't get like the yeah. screen time they, they deserve. And I'm not saying Stargate in a bad way. I'm just saying like a different show. 
you know, that is just, and I guess for me, the action wasn't so bad. It was like interesting to see Buffy and Willow uh, and, and Xander and Giles like running through action, but I'm more used to seeing them mix it up and actually fight. So that was kind of the weird thing. And yeah, so I don't know. It was just like, but this is not as bad as where the wild things are, right? Or was that the sex one? Yeah. 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 Oh, this, I could watch this all day compared to the other one. So I think I like where the wild things are, but it's bad, good to me. It's so bad, it's good. Like it's a different kind of experience. This one's like bad in a different way, but it's not boring. I mean, like that action scene when Will, when Buffy's like, get down and like jumps on Willow, there's freaking machine gun fire. And like straight up that scene starts chaotic where a dude is just firing wildly while a demon's on top of him. Like, Whoa. First of all, this show almost never uses guns. Yeah, and now really. using a ton of them, but also not aiming? <laughs> <laughs> Where's John Wick? No wonder John Wick is such a pro. Like, <laughs> this guy knows one. how to target. Nobody here has any target training at all. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird theme where like multiple times the initiative people were getting killed and they would just be shooting into the ceiling. <laughs> like, oh. so They're used to using electric guns, which you don't have to aim. They just... Like yeah. magic based on the flow of electricity, Adam. right? Oh my god, I love we didn't talk about the scene, but where Buffy is like and the Scooby game is explaining how Adam works and like how their plan should be. And those people are just grumpy gusses, just like, uh uh-uh, uh, we've got this handled. Yeah. I love that their their big plan is like we're just gonna shoot him a bunch. Like if shooting him a bunch worked, you would have done it by now. <laughs> <laughs> that plan's dumb. <laughs> shoot him till he's dead oh yeah that's how so they stopped the frankenstein yep totally yeah i also think uh last episode maybe mike or travis mentioned like it's too bad buffy doesn't know the information that jonathan gave about the about the uranium core but it turns out that that information passed on to the next uh dimension i mean to the to our, our right world i don't know if that affects a prediction or anything but Speaking of predictions, you guys want to move on to predictions? Virgin predictions. Okay, predictions. Um, So here's a fun stat. Uh, We have done, according to my prediction spreadsheet, 72 episodes of Buffy Virgin. I don't know if that's an exact count. But in 72 episodes, Mike, you have made 112 predictions that have been confirmed and 67 that have been denied uh, and 142 more that we still have open. Uh, So your (laughs) accuracy is uh, uh, 62.6 and so on. Um, So there's a lot to get through here for this episode. So first of all, let's see. In episode uh, 13 of this season... Michael, you predicted Walsh's body will be incorporated into a monster. I'd say that's confirmed. Okay. Uh, you predicted that Adam will get hacked. That, now that he's dead, I think we can say did not happen. Although I think it was a good idea. I mean, I think given that we had Willow and we had Adam, like, it should have happened. It just never did. That's how the that's how it it should have happened. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. Man. Yeah, sorry. What what about the self encrypted me- self decrypting message too? Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna no. make a. I forgot. I was gonna make a question about like, is that what coding look, looks like? <laughs> we, we gotta move on. We gotta move yeah, on. All right. Um, Mike predicted uh, in uh, season 15 of this episode or season uh, episode 15 of this season. Mike predicted that. Faith will be the one to kill Adam. That did not happen. So that's denied. Uh, Let's see. Mike predicted that Adam is going to go ahead and remove Spike's chip, which he never did. So that is denied. That asshole. Okay. In season, uh, season four, episode 19, Mike, you predicted that Spike is going to betray Adam because fuck that guy for breaking into his place when he was sleeping. Now, this one, I think, is a little more iffy. Does Spike actually betray Adam? He kind of waits till Adam's dead and then switches sides. He doesn't really betray him, does I mean, and he fails. He said he's constantly stated that he fails Adam. But does he betray Adam? I don't think he does. I think 
this is one of the laziest cases of like let's let spike live that's ever existed <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you're right about that okay so that's denied okay um let's see we have adam is going to die in season four mike you predicted that uh just a couple episodes ago that is true that happened so that's confirmed Ugh. okay so last episode you predicted that the gang will get back together in the next episode did they get back together guys Hell yeah. they got back together yes, they did. They got the way, back man. together so that is confirmed okay last episode mike you predicted that forrest is not dead right now which was true in a sense now is forrest dead and this is a new entity or is Forrest still alive at that point? I think, well, that's part of why I asked the question of like, did Forrest even have a personality change? Like, I think right. they didn't even kill Forrest. They just added some like demon skin yeah. to him. Yeah. <laughs> He's I sort think of like the Robocop, tradition. where they just kept the face area. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so that's confirmed that Forrest was not dead. But Forrest did die. Mike, you predicted in that same episode that Forrest will die within the season, which he did. Although Grant lives. Anybody notice that Grant lives? Yeah. He makes it all the way out. Okay. Green he has like a moment. He has like a emotional moment with Buffy. Yeah. If only his, if only his career survived. Buffy, the vampire star. Okay. And Mike, you also predicted that the initiative will be shut down by the end of season four. And I believe he happened. predicted the initiative. Uh, that's oh. a spelling. I think that's actually my spelling mistake. <laughs> The initiative will be shut Box down by the end of season four. You're on fire with those predictions, man. I think we will find that his uh, overall accuracy, what did we say it was a second ago? 62 something. Okay, it has gone down slightly. <laughs> so you, you were at a 62.5 and change, you're now at a 62.4 and change. Well, I, I want to add six more predictions here <laughs> to this mess. Uh, Riley will start attending school like nothing ever happened. Buffy did not enjoy having a demon in her body during this episode. The Scoobies will use the prime. Can we just call it the primeval spell? The Scoobies will use the primeval spell again. There will be no more uranium powered monsters. <laughs> Riley will never mention forest again. And former members of the initiative will form a support group. They got some shit to talk about. There's no way that that can be avoided. Uh, going back a couple of those there, you said Buffy didn't like. It's kind of hard to make a prediction about the past. Right. Are you saying it's going to be revealed that she didn't like it? Sure, yeah. It will be revealed that okay. Buffy did not enjoy having a demon in her body. It will be revealed. Make some predictions about Spike. Oh, um, sure. Spike will... Do I have a chip? Anything out there about his getting his chip removed yet? Just yes, that Adam was going to remove predicted it? that he will get it removed, and you have okay. also predicted that uh, he will get it removed. Um, sorry, that'll get it removed, and that when he gets it removed, he won't tell people. Okay, great. Well, then, what? Uh, more about Spike? Will you know? Will Spike, Spike leave town? Oh no way! Spike, uh, Spike considers himself a part of the. He's part of the show now. Spike is going to. Uh, Continue to show up to Scooby Gang meetings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know he should leave town. I don't. He's. I don't know why he still sticks around. He's another one which we got to talk about in the season four wrap up, which is like Giles and Spike. What are they doing on this show? <laughs> <laughs> Equal. Both are equally uh, useless to the show and cause just as many small disturbances in the force. I think we're ready for themes. Deep stuff. Well, I just had one in here, which came up in this episode, but staying friends with your high school friends after your first year of college is possible. Discuss. Yep. Well, here we all are. Uh, the core Scoobies. But we all took a break. I think yes. the first year of college is like a total reset of your life. And it's so hard to bring all those people along because you have to figure out college. And I know the show isn't really about this. Like this theme, it kind of feels like they bring it up like it's a thing. Um, you know what I say that? It is, it is about this. It is generally about this. Like they've been through so much in their first year, assuming this is the end of the school year. 
but we don't really care about school anymore. <laughs> but it's not as fixated on like graduation or prom or some kind of notable like school related event at this point. But it is it is nice to see them come together and still be friends at the end of the episode. And that that matches Yeah, never mind. I think I started in the total wrong direction on this, which I thought <laughs> it was the opposite was true. But no, they totally like uh they totally stayed friends and they totally had all the struggles. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 from my personal experience, I'd say like it's okay to, when you move to college and stuff, to like disassociate from your high school friends because you'll grow and stuff, but then you'll come back together and do it, a show <laughs> 20 years later. If like, it's real. If, if it's real. All you, you had was really real, you'll come back together. Yeah. And it's, it's okay to grow on, to go on and like, uh, you don't have to get locked into your high school behaviors, right? Like... Oh my gosh, we, in the new Buffy show, they should like have a little thing where, um, you know, where the original core Scoobies all have a podcast together. And it's like just <laughs> off to the side of the action of the show. That would be amazing. Oh God, that'd be so good. What would their podcast be about? Would they like, they, would they just like, would they, oh, we're doing an episode by episode rewatch of Dawson's Creek or what? Like <laughs> a TV reference to the podcast would be great. I can also imagine a moth style podcast where they just tell stories. Yeah. yeah. They wouldn't be able to tell any of their stories on the internet. <laughs> well, they tell like mundane, like stories that they think are as exciting because it'd be like mundane life, like when they got a ticket or like, <laughs> you know, when their apartment flooded. So then it would be like, you know, novel and useful. It'd be like, are know, they like, are. like they recode their experiences as like, like, uh, it's like this was about the time my boyfriend broke up with me and it's like you uncode all the vampire stuff <laughs> he was a real night owl and he didn't really you know, get to know my friends that much and i thought we were meant to be together but when we slept together he changed became a jerk all right guys i think that's the episode um so yeah uh make sure to like and review and subscribe. Uh, and uh, if you send us comments, we'll read them on the air. Uh, I've been your host, Dennis St. John. You can buy my comics online at D E N I S C O M I X. Uh, BuffyVirgin.com is up and running. Um, and we are on Twitter and Instagram at, Buffy, uh, at BuffyVirgin and at BuffyVirginPod if you want to check out uh, the drawings I do every week. Um, and other than that, we'll see you in hell. Uh,